With Tobu, I'm going to resurrect this phone. After connecting the USB, you boot it while holding the volume up, and your computer will see it as a mass storage device. Then, you flash the OS, and boom! Ubuntu Touch. here. Today we're going to be looking at the Ubuntu Touch on the PinePhone Pro. This is an impressive piece of software that Canonical started working on around 2011. They've worked on it for about five, six years, and then they handed it over to UB Ports community once they figured out that they couldn't compete with iPhone or uh, Android. The support is relatively recent. It's still only supported by the community. If you look at their webpage, it's not officially there. This is definitely showing progress. The, the drivers are coming along. This phone is now, what, two, three years old? and still has a lot of driver's issues, but it's still a very interesting odyssey to look at. All right, how about we run through the software? All right, this is Ubuntu Touch. You swipe left to right to get out of the lock screen. Your notifications area, you can get to it by swiping down. It's all one small bar on the top. Notifications, rotation I can lock, keyboard settings. Let's add Japanese. Japanese. Go back. I have two keyboard lights now. I'm pretty sure it's the same keyboard as used in Plasma Mobile. This is the setting screen. I can go back to the notifications, swiping down, network. I'm not connected to any Wi Fi right now. Sound, battery, calendar, and then system. About this device, about movement to touch, about Ubi for ports foundation, file above report, system settings, lock shutdown. Let's just see how, what locking looks like. Okay, this is the lock screen. And you can drag right or left to go get out of it instead of dragging up or down. This is a pattern in this OS. Looks like it's not going to show my Wi-Fi. Yeah, let's go for the main list, Morpheus. Going to test the audio so you can hear it. Mega Man. Let's try Mega Man. Let's download it. Well, the audio is actually pretty good. I'm impressed. All right. Let's go to gallery. There are no events, it looks like. It's a calendar. Uh, I think it's a photo album. Camera. Camera does not work. Probably because of the drivers. Notice there are little dots against the next to the running applications. Reminds me of a little bit of Mac OS X. I don't know where I guess it's called Mac OS now. These are the installed apps. Let's go back to this later. Contacts. Let's make a contact. Usually the create is by swiping up on Ubuntu Touch, which is interesting. Their phone number five 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 five. Ah, at boo 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 dot com. All right, done. And we now have a contact. Let's try calling the contact. Opens up the phone app. Okay, this looks good. I have no working SIM card. Back to contacts. Try an email. Does nothing. Let's try texting. 
All right, this seemed to open. And open up the other apps down here through that. Now, if you click the Ubuntu thing here, it'll open the list of full list of your apps. If you do small swipe right, it'll switch between the open apps. Do a large swipe and you get the whole list of app, open apps. And here it's not too many more. We have a barcode reader, which isn't gonna do anything because the camera doesn't work. Calculator, which seems to crash. We have not looked at the calendar yet. You can shrink and grow it by dragging it and easily create calendar events. Again, you create by uh, clicking the bottom. Camera, clock. Doesn't seem able to find my location. Timer, milliseconds on the bottom. That's interesting. This, I have no idea what this is. I drag it. Looks like I sent a one hour timer on here. Weird. Don't get it. All right, let's go to the next step. Next we have contacts and external storage. My SIM card is Bork, so we won't be able to see that. File manager. General Linux file system. Oh, we have the download of the song. That's nice. Color we looked at, media player. Please choose a file to open. Let's go back to the file manager. We'll open. Oh, it's working. Wow. Dang. Got messaging, morph browser is based off Chromium. Music. Oh, okay. Okay, so no music. I have to drag, move the file to the music folder. So it's right here. How can I do this? Uh, cut. Home. Music. Uh, triple dot, maybe? Oops. Paste. Yes. Okay, let's check out the music. It's here. Wow. It's pretty nice, actually. We have next notes. Fairly common program now. Oh, it syncs with Evernote. That's that's interesting. Notes, add a note on the bottom. Ah! Can add attachments, play the fonts, and it adds the notes there. Open store, phone, system settings, terminal, weather. Let's look at the terminal. Oh, it has a little shortcuts on the bottom here and you open up the keyboard by clicking that. Okay, LS. Okay, that works. We'll be using the terminal when we install um, Wadroid. You install it through apt. Weather. Cannot determine my location. Swipe up from the bottom to add a location. Uh, Tokyo. Tokyo. Oh, there's a lag and it popping up. I think, okay, there we go. Oh, there's a lot of Tokyos in the world. Let's do the one in Japan. And now we got some weather. Oh, this is nice. Simple and nice. Last, let's uh, look at let's look at the system settings. Usually, this one takes a little bit of time, so I wanted to do it last. All right, flight mode, rotation lock, updates available. We'll go look at that after. Wi-Fi, cellular, Bluetooth. No devices found. We make a hotspot. I don't know if the drivers will allow that. VPN, background and appearance. 
simpler effects. Let's see what there is for art. Oh, nice. Let's try this first one. I like it. Can I do anything to it? Nope. Background image. Okay, let's go back. Count, sound. Ringer volume, vibrate. Keyboard sound, ooh. Language and text. Okay, so this has some of the keyboard stuff in here. I already added Japanese here in the keyboards. Keyboard opacity, that's nice. Accounts. Notifications. Gestures. Oh, that's interesting, you can configure it. Battery. I have to scroll down now for every single item. X11 Sandbox Application Manager. Okay, that's interesting. Phone. Mouse. This is a convergence OS, so if you plug it into a monitor, it will assume there is a mouse and keyboard with it, and it show a little mouse cursor on the screen. It does work, but with nowadays with the USB-C monitors, it will actually make it unusable. And this is with it connected to USB to a monitor. Notice that there is a mouse on here. You can sort of move it around in a crazy way, but if you have an actual keyboard, it should function correctly. Nothing is showing on my monitor except for this white strip on the bottom. Don't know why, but it does have the integration. I'm sure it would do something if I had an actual mouse connected. So make sure you have a full setup when you're connecting, but it does work. Brightness. A lot of menus with very few items in them. Application, updates, updates to two applications. Okay, let's install. While it's doing that, we have an about screen in the bottom and a reset option. Clicking doesn't seem to do anything. Oh, there we go. About shows me some basic information on the OS and the phone. Reset, allows you to delete everything on the device. Let's look back at the updates, and they're installed. And it's checking for other updates. All right, let's go to the software manager. Open store. So this store only includes FOSS software. It's not really a store for selling apps, at least from what I've seen. Uh, let's look for Firefox. No Firefox. Okay, let's try Chrome. No Chrome. Filters and sorting. You gotta love the name of some of these apps. I am looking at Fart Plan. That is not fat, not funny app. That's interesting. Well, there's a Maps app. Let's try it. Maybe later. And you can donate. So there is a way to have money pass hands. Thirteen smiles, four ahs, and two bugs. Pure maps, see what it does. Wants to access your location, allow. There's a license. And I am in Europe, apparently. It's cute, though. And then you can go to Antarctica. 
Let's me spin. No. You can pinch to zoom. That's nice. Move around. Okay, that's cute. All right, this was this was Ubuntu Touch on the Pine Phone Pro. Nothing too fancy. Well done for what's there. Not totally filled out. Very smooth. I like the animation. And yeah, I like it. I gotta say, I'm genuinely impressed with Ubuntu Touch on the Pine Phone Pro. It's fairly polished, it's fairly complete. It looks like it's a real product made by a commercial company, and it is. I recommend anyone who's interested in Linux on phones, try this out, bar none. The keyboard is very similar. It might even be the same keyboard used in Plasma Mobile. One note, if you have very small hands or a large phone, trying to swipe from left to right might be a little bit awkward. It feels like it was designed for phones of yesteryear when they were smaller, not for this size. You can't get your thumb to the other side, so it's very awkward to try to swipe from different directions without using two hands. Regardless of all of that, I'd 100% recommend taking a look. This is a good OS. It's very interesting. Support FOSS. Next time, I'm going to be looking into WayDroid installed on this Ubuntu Touch phone. We're going to see how to install basic programs. We're going to see how well it works. And I'm also going to try to install the Google Play Store. This is important to me and important to a lot of people because a lot of uh, commercial apps that are required for day-to-day -day life, say like your banking app or maybe a key card app for a building, are only on iPhone or Android. So if you can get it onto this Linux phone in the Linux OS and use it, that opens up doors for moving away from the duopoly. So let's check this out next time. I'm excited and I hope you are too. All right, see you later. Bye.